Let's take a look at the different factors that regulate blood pressure. And I'm taking a look at the notes on page 13. And you can see that there are three ways that regulate blood pressure. One is autoregulation, neural control, and hormonal control. So let's just take these one by one. Uh, but keep in mind, we need pressure to push blood to our vital organs. And so a minimum blood pressure is vital to life. And so therefore we regulate blood pressure. As far as autoregulation goes, what that is is just um, a change in blood pressure due to a local factor. The example that I give in the notes, if the tissue is hypoxic, uh, low oxygen levels, or if there's an increase in waste products, that that would cause vasodilation. That would decrease the blood pressure in that area, but it would increase the blood flow to try to deliver more oxygen and try to take those waste products away. Another quick example of autoregulation, this is something that we looked at already, where we were looking at how an arteriole perfuses a capillary bed with blood. And if that arteriole uh, constricted, it would restrict blood flow into that capillary bed. And so this is just another example of um, changing the diameter of a vessel locally. And so, for instance, if this was an air sac in the lung and we weren't getting good gas exchange occurring there due to disease, then that capillary bed wouldn't perfuse it with blood. It would probably move to other areas that are functioning better. Okay, a better way to control body-wide blood pressure is through the nervous system. So let's start there. So the two baseline facts, I think, that make it easier to understand nervous system regulation of blood pressure is to understand that our arteries, remember we talked about how the tunica media is very well developed in arteries, how it has a very thick muscular wall, that those arteries have muscle tone, just like we talked about in AP1, in other words, a partial state of constriction. And that is what's known as vasomotor tone. And vasomotor tone is just the result of the sympathetic nervous system innervating that smooth muscle and keeping those arteries in a partial state of contraction. The other thing that we want to understand uh, baseline is that we monitor our blood pressure. And the way that we monitor our blood pressure is through stretch receptors, or they're known as baroreceptors. Baroreceptors are stretch receptors in two different places in the body, in the internal carotid arteries and the aorta. And what they do is they monitor the degree of stretch on the walls of these vessels, and that's going to act as a measurement of pressure within the vessel. So let's just take a quick look at a simple depiction here. What they're showing us is that there are stretch receptors in the aorta, and here are the stretch receptors in the carotid arteries, in the internal carotid arteries. And so like we were saying, those stretch receptors are just monitoring the degree of stretch. So that if there was a high degree of stretch, that's interpreted as a higher pressure in the vessel. If those stretch receptors, the baroreceptors, didn't sense a lot of stretch, that would be an indicator of a lower pressure in that vessel. Looking at neural control or the nervous system control of blood pressure, there's an area in the brain stem uh, in the medulla called the vasomotor center, and that is the origin of um, the sympathetic innervation of smooth muscle that we were just talking about. What it does is it stimulates a low level of contraction in smooth muscle of the blood vessel walls, uh, particularly the arterioles, and that's what's known as vasomotor tone, as we were talking about. So baroreceptors are stretch receptors that are located in the uh, carotid sinuses and in the aorta, and this is a primary mechanism to regulate blood pressure. So if the baroreceptors sense an increased blood pressure, if there is an increased blood pressure, that is going to increase the stretch in the arteries. And that increased stretch is going to be fed into the brain. It's going to inhibit the vasomotor center which would inhibit vasomotor tone, meaning that di vasodilation would um, occur, and that's gonna decrease the blood pressure. Let's take a look at a picture of that. Okay, so here's the teeter-totter analogy from our book. We're used to this type of depiction. And so what they're showing us is that there is an increase in blood pressure. That's the stimulus, so blood pressure went up which means that the baroreceptors in the carotid um, sinuses sense that, that there's increased stretch. And that increased stretch 
is fed into the brain stem and what it will do is it will inhibit the vasomotor center and when you inhibit the vasomotor center what that will do is it will um, cause a decreased um, vasoconstriction or in other words it's going to uh, allow vasodilation and when the diameter of that vessel gets bigger the blood pressure will come down. Let's take a look at the other possibility. In this picture, they're showing us the opposite. They're showing us that blood pressure decreases, so there's a fall in blood pressure, and if there's a fall in blood pressure, the baroreceptors can pick up that decreased degree of stretch, feed that sensory input into the brain stem, and that is going to stimulate the vasomotor center. And when you stimulate the vasomotor center, that's going to increase sympathetic innervation, and it's going to cause even more vasoconstriction, decreasing the diameter of that vessel, thereby increasing the blood pressure, increasing it back up to where it should be. Okay, so I outlined those two scenarios um, in the notes, so you can look at it either way, the picture or the notes. As far as if there was a decrease in blood pressure, we'll look at that in the notes real quick. There would be a decreased stretch in the arteries uh, that would be picked up by those baroreceptors, which would stimulate the vasomotor center, which would increase vasomotor tone, you know, increase vasoconstriction, that would increase the blood pressure. There are also what are called chemoreceptors uh, near the baroreceptors, and what they do is they sense oxygen, carbon dioxide pressures, they also sense pH. And so changes in those levels will also affect blood pressure, although we're going to talk about those in the next unit because primarily they're used for um, stimulating respiration. So you can imagine if there was a decrease in oxygen or an increase in CO2, or if we started to become acidic, that um, stimulates respiration. So we'll look at that in the next unit. The third way that blood pressure can be regulated is through hormones, and so I made two lists for us. One list is, you know, hormones that will work to increase blood pressure. Angiotensin II, we know that's a powerful stimulus for aldosterone release, but that does cause vasoconstriction on its own, and vasoconstriction increases blood pressure. Aldosterone, we know that that's a hormone that stimulates sodium retention at the level of the kidney, and if we retain sodium, uh, chances are you're going to start to retain water through ADH, and all of that will boost blood volume and blood pressure. Uh, to decrease blood pressure, there's one hormone um, that I have listed, and we haven't talked about this one at all yet. It's called atrial natriuretic factor. It's a hormone that's secreted by the heart, um, and that's in response to increased blood pressure. So the stimulus is an increased blood pressure, or in other words, the chambers of the heart are more stretched. And if you know what aldosterone does, which I know you do, just remember this has an anti-aldosterone effect. What it does is it uh, targets the kidney and it causes the kidney to excrete sodium, which is going to um, decrease the blood volume because when sodium is put into the urine, water will follow, follow. It will increase urine volume, decrease blood volume, and because it's decreasing blood volume, it works to lower blood pressure.